Explain like I'm five how did the income of rich people mentioned in the literature of 19th century work. When reading a book like The Count of Monte Criato or Sherlock Holmes. They mention that this and this person has an income of £4,000 and that person will have this. And this income when she marries. How does that work? Most of these people do not do any actual job. Usually. They are landlords. They own big swaths of land. And have tenants including tenant farmers who pay them rent. They may also have other forms of wealth that generate income. Like stocks or bond. But until the 20th century. Most wealth was held in the form of land. Novels by Anthony Trollope tend to be more explicit than most from that era about the exact nature of characters' wealth. Rents have been mentioned. But there were also income from loans. Before the complete dominance of investment banks the nobility and industrialists were also the major source of venture capital. You wanted to start a business. Then you borrowed from someone rich and paid them interest. They had incomes from farms or rental property investments such as consuls' government bonds. And ownership or investment in projects such as mines or railroads. Import-export was big business. The question of a book character having an income of X thousand a year was a shorthand for contemporary readers to instantly see how really rich one man was against another. Quite how the gossiping other characters knew these figures is never really revealed. Business owners also had incomes. A lot of rich people owned land housing or businesses. Some people had royalties from designs or patents still in some countries. Largely. The same way it works for rich people now. Things like income from investments. Full or shared ownership of business ventures things like railroads or shipping and real estate. Holdings. Many rich people back then. Especially nobility and aristocrats in countries which have nobility owned massive estates of land. And got tremendous amount of income from that land from things like farming. Timber. Mining. And renting it out to tenants. I've not seen mentioned that they often have money in the funds. Essentially government bonds. The government borrowed money in times of expenditure then paid interest on it. So an income of £200 a year could mean £4.5,000 invested in a government fund. As inflation was low or even negative it was a very good, very reliable investment and generally only open to the rich. They come from rich families and or have estates that basically give them allowances so they don't need to work. Think of trust fund kids these days. The nobility or wealthy people who receive an income of X pounds or will get X pounds when married. Or upon the age of 30 or whatever are usually heirs of large estates. Who provide annual allowances. So the third daughter of the Earl of Stick and the Arses Hire might receive a certain income from her father's estate upon marriage or something. Based on the Earl's will. Kind of a nerdy book. But if you're ever looking for a super thorough explanation of the history of wealth, read Capital in the 21st century. It's big, but surprisingly approachable and the author references books by Austin and Balzac a lot. Which is fun. It's really eye-opening about how wealth inequality has returned to levels in the 1800s. Everyone is talking about land and crops in Europe which is true. But let's not forget the colonies. A lot of the nobility of Europe owned farms and land in the Americas Haiti for instance and worked one hundreds of thousands of African slaves to death growing sugar, cotton, indigo and other crops. It was a huge source of cheap goods for Europe and wealth for the aristocracy.
Kings often gave lords and their family land for serving the crown. The lords would provide homes and protection to their serfs in exchange for rent. In Sherlock Holmes' era, this practice had changed to be less of major swaths of land and instead rows of buildings or neighborhoods that had been owned by the family for generations. In fact, these same families still own most things. Basically, rich people can make money doing nothing because they are rich. Usually these people have inherited money, are from a rich family that gives the person an allowance, or own property somewhere that earns the money or, in the case of marriage, the bride may come with a substantial dowry from her family or she may have property of her own. Mr. Darcy was worth £50,000 a year. I think his family was richer than the royal family. Would have to have been a huge landholder with many tenant farmers paying their dues. When you belong to a noble or landed family your income is from the family estate. The modern day would be like trust fund kids. If I own an estate that generates income it produces goods. Has farmers that rent the land. Houses some other industry that I own then I dole out income to the members of my family. Those who marry produce heirs etc. may get a larger share. Mostly this. The landed gentry is a traditional British social class consisting of gentlemen in the original. Sense that is. Those who owned land in the form of country estates to such an extent that they were not required. To actively work. Except in an administrative capacity on their own lands. The income is from the land they own. Crops grown. Tenants rent. Bonds. And such. As for the when she married that refers to IIRC the term correctly dowry. Essentially as a enticement for marriage the husband of the daughter to a wealthy man would receive. A dowry. Usually a set amount of wealth or land would be granted to him. He owns land in Britain. France and Austria investments. Run by stewards plus money in government bonds consuls in British parlance of the time. They go into some detail about the other's wealth. Of course. We as the reader know about Edmund's hidden treasure. But the others consider him an anomaly specifically because he has no apparent land holdings or business interests. Despite his seemingly limitless wealth. His country of origin is untraceable. And though his knowledge of Parisian language and customs is impeccable. People have him pegged as a foreigner from some royal line or other or possibly a vampire. Landlords. Shareholders in various enterprises that get a lot of their money from dividends. I think the income mentioned in regards to marriage is essentially an allowance paid by the woman's. Parents toward her keep. To the husband. Like an ongoing dowry. Where the money the parents have comes from could be varied. Titled landowners mostly from rents on their properties. But there were also the merchant class and bankers as well. It's basically like modern day trust fund kids except they have to marry to get the money. And marry someone mom and dad approves of. Which probably meant marrying someone with more money or a greater title. Ah. So basically they were the OG landlords taking in rent money like modern day Airbnb hosts.